In this video we will talk about halogenation with alkenes and more specifically we will talk about bromination. So first let's start by drawing an alkene. And we can just show something that looks like this. We can react it with Br2 because we are using a bromination reaction. So now we want to show electron pushing. And remember, pi bonds serve as good nucleophiles because they have electrons built in them, very similar to that of lone pairs. And so we can show the next step to this. And now we have a bromine bridge. So a common question really quick that I that I want to address is is sometimes people will have questions in reference to Br2 and and people will think well you know isn't isn't that a diatomic molecule and therefore isn't it nonpolar and and if it's nonpolar then how does it serve as an, an electrophile well if Br2 gets close enough in proximity to the pi bond um, there can actually be an induced dipole interaction and and from that Br2 might might actually become partially positive for a brief moment in time and and when it does that that's when it'll serve as an electrophile so so Br2 is polarizable and and that's how it's able to serve as an electrophile so now let's let's continue on with this chemical process and now we have our our bromine bridge attached to two carbons and both of these carbons are going to bear a a partial positive charge but but one of them will be able to bear a partial positive charge with more stability than the other and and remember this is a tertiary carbon whereas over here this is a secondary carbon and if you read about hyperconjugation that explains that or why a tertiary carbon is more stable than a secondary carbon and a secondary carbon is more stable than a primary carbon so from that we know that this carbon can actually bear a much larger partial positive charge than this carbon so this tertiary carbon will serve as a, as a much better electrophile uh, for those reasons and and it will it will do so in this reaction and, and that's just really reinforcement to the Markovnikov rule, which, which states that, you know, hydrogens will, will go over to the carbon with more hydrogens, and the, uh, the second nucleophile, when it attacks, will, will go over to the carbon with the more substituents. So, so that just reinforces that Markovnikov rule. So now let's talk about how Br is still floating around in solution, or a bromide ion, and this is going to serve as the second nucleophilic attack on this tertiary carbon and when it does that this bridge species breaks apart and opens so next we can show the next step so now we have something that looks like this where we have bromine on this side and then we have bromine on this side and remember, we, all, we always had an implied hydrogen as well. So, so now we want to try to show stereochemistry. But, but how can we do that? Well, first we need to know whether or not we are working with a syn or anti addition. And I think that can be explained much easier if we go back to our, to our second step and redraw the ring from a from a different angle and we can, we can draw it I suppose from like a Hayworth projection where it looks like this and we can make our bridge over here we still have our methyl group and over here we have a hydrogen so remember this this carbon is going to be able to bear most of the partial positive charge so we can show that and and so now one thing I want to show is that this nucleophile from the bromine or the bromide ion will come from under the ring 
and open it in this way. So, so why does it go from under the ring and not on top? Say, for example, from, from one of these directions. Well, it does that, and, and the short answer to that is, is basically that the, the bromine bridge occupies a lot of space, and just from the standpoint of molecular geometry, it is more favorable for the nucleophile, or the, the bromine, or the bromide ion, to come in from the bottom. And, and when it does that, we end up with something that looks like this, where we have a bromine on bottom, and then we have a bromine on top. So we can see that we were working with anti-addition. So why is it anti? Well, they're anti because these bromines are on opposite sides to one another relative to the ring. So, so now that we know that we are working with anti-addition, we can transfer this information into our product down here. So if we know that bromine, or bromine is going to be on opposite sides to the ring, we can just simply say that this bromine will be dashed and this bromine will be wedged. And, and we, can re we can really just randomly assign that because we're just, you know, showing a, a random chemical reaction. And, and when we show our enantiomer, we could just simply show an opposite configuration to that. So if this is wedged, then this implied methyl will actually be dashed. And this hydrogen will be wedged. So now we can show it's enantiomer. But before we show the enantiomer, let's just show why that enantiomer is possible in the first place. So as I drew up here, I, I made this ring into this Hayworth projection, and I showed a, uh, a bromine bridge on top. But, but as I mentioned earlier, that's just I just randomly did that. I mean, I could, have, I could have drawn it like this, where the bromine bridge was on bottom. And it would have looked like this. I still would have had the uh, methyl group, hydrogen, and so if I would have done that, now the bromine, or the bromide ion, would have actually came in from the top of the ring instead of the bottom, and it would have looked like this. The ring would have still opened and my product would actually look like this, where I have a bromine on top and a bromine on bottom. Once again, that is anti-addition. because they are on opposite sides of the ring relative to each other. And I can simply take that information now and transfer it over here and show the opposite configuration to what I drew before. So before I had a, my first bromine was wedged, so now I could just make it dashed. Methyl was, was dashed, so now I can make that wedged and bromine was dashed so I make that wedged hydrogen was wedged now I just make it dashed and so those are the enantiomers to to this uh, bromination reaction and that is how bromination reactions work